what happens in book three is that Newton begins with phenomena, of course, phenomena, astronomical phenomena related to the motion of planets and so on and so forth. And by using some theorem, some propositions of book one, he's able to show that uh, uh, the secondary satellites uh, of Jupiter uh, are attracted by Jupiter by a force that varies at the inverse square of the distance. The planets of the solar system are attracted by the Sun by a force that varies at the inverse square of the distance and so on and so forth. So he is able to use the theorems of the first book as uh, something that allows him to deduce that there is a force that varies as the inverse square of the distance. Now, the interesting thing is that when uh, you assume that uh, this force is a universal force, what you get is pretty good predictions on a certain number of astronomical phenomena. For instance, Newton was able to uh, predict uh, the precession of equinoxes, he was able to predict uh, the shape of the Earth, the tides, and so on and so forth. It should be said that all these deductions are um, um, generated a lot of, of criticism and discussion during the 18th century and had to be modified, greatly modified. This has to be recognized. But what is interesting about these deductions is that um, in most cases what uh, uh, these models allow you is to make predictions um, but there are discrepancies between the theoretical predictions and the observed phenomena. Now, as uh, Bernard Cohen and George Smith have uh, shown in their works, Newton could use, could make a virtuous use of these discrepancies in his uh, uh, philosophical, uh, natural philosophy, because uh, these discrepancies are not something that makes the system collapse, but rather they are a signature that uh, the model has to be enriched by other elements who have, uh, which have a physical uh, importance, let us say so. So, for Newton, I have a model I make a prediction, there is a discrepancy, I, I, I do not throw away the model. I try to understand which are the physical causes that generate this discrepancy. And once I have identified these physical causes, what happens is that the discrepancy gets smaller. Um, and this uh, is, uh, you know, a, a very interesting characteristic of Newton's modeling because uh, it is a modeling that uh, allows, as Cohen and Smith have shown, a progressive uh, uh, development which leads to models that are richer and richer and tell us more and more about the world.